Welcome. Today we're going to learn Parsha's Chukas. So, in the middle of the Parsha, after the Parsha of uh, Paraduma, we have the Parsha of the Meimariva. The people came to meet Bratzin and Vatamasham Miriam Vatkovasham. Miriam was Nifter. Now, the Beirish of Miriam was the Schus of Miriam. So, when she was Nifter, then there was no more water. The people didn't have any water. And they complained. So Hashem told Moshe like this. Go assemble all the people. You'll speak to the stone. This is the stone that uh, the Beir Shemirian was a stone and it stopped giving water. So you'll speak to the stone like Nehem. And then it'll give water. Then water will come out. You're going to talk to the stone. Water will come out and then they'll have all the water they need for themselves and for the animals. So Moshe Rabbeinu did not, uh, he... He hid it twice, and a lot of water came out. Now, there's different sheets, the different drachim uh, over here, and they're showing them how to learn what happened over here. What was Moshe's chet? It says, Hashem al Moshe, Yan lo bi Yisrael, since you didn't make a kiddush Hashem, You're not going to bring Kol Yisrael to Yisrael. You're going to die before they go into Eretz Yisrael. What was the problem? So we didn't go with Rashi's derech. Rashi says that he was supposed to talk, and he wasn't supposed to hit. And because he hit the stone, that was that was the that was why how he failed to make a Kiddush Hashem. How is that? What, what would have been the Kiddush Hashem? So Rashi is like this. She'ilu dibartem el If you had spoken to the stone, ve'hoitzi and gave out water, ha'yisi mekudish le'ene ha'eda. Vayimrim and people would say, ma'asela zeh she'ena medaber ve'ene shemeya, ve'ene tzorch leparnosa, mekayim dubur shalmokam, ma'aduch desela listens, kavachaymer onu, we certainly have to listen to the rabbi nishleyna. So this is the uh, old Mephashim struggle with this. What kind of Kalvachimer is this? We're making Kalvachimer because the, the stone listened, therefore we also have to listen. Uh, uh, we, the stone doesn't have a Bechira, doesn't have a Yed Sahara, doesn't have anything. The Banshem told it to give water, it gave water. What does that have to do with us? How is there a Kalvachimer? This is what the Mefarshim ask. And sometimes you have to understand, what are they supposed to learn from the stone? That the Rabbi Shalom talks to the stone, so the stone listens. When he talks to us, we also have to listen. I mean, we know this. You know, we've been in the Midbar for 40 years. We're learning Torah. The people that, uh, that uh, violated the Torah were punished. You know, people, and uh, so we know we have to listen. I mean, why, why? Why do you have to tell us now, a Kalvachimer, that we have to listen? What's the Chiddush? What are, what are we learning out from the stone that we didn't know until now? So why didn't Moshe listen? Why not? So Rashi says like this. What happened was that this stone rolled away into a field of, of many boulders, and Moshe didn't know which is which, and he spoke to he spoke to a boulder, and it didn't, it didn't give out water. They spoke to a different stone. Amru, they said, Maybe we have to hit it, just like it says in Rafidim that they didn't have any water. The Banshul said, Maybe that's what we have to do. We have to hit it, not talk to it. But what kind of a mistake is this? Rabban Shalom said, Vidibarta Melasala. He said, talk. He didn't say it. Did they misunderstand what Rabban Shalom said? Over there he said, Vihikisa Betsur. Here he says, Vidibarta Melasala. So what's the, you know, what was the mistake exactly? What was it? Where we are standing now, Klal Yisrael is at the end of the 40 years, on the threshold of Eretz Yisrael. They're about to go into Eretz Yisrael. They're coming this way, that way. They're coming towards Eretz Yisrael. 
Until now, Klal Yisrael was living a charmed life. They had Mon, they had Berisha Miriam, they had the Nanea COVID, the clothing were... Not, they, they had nothing. They had nothing that they had to do. Everything was fine. They were fully supported in Koilo. They had nothing to do. All they had to do was sit and learn. And they had no daigas, no problems. However, once they come into that stroll, then life is going to become normal. People are going to have to have farms, they're going to have to have jobs, they're going to have to have businesses. There's going to be normal life. The life in the, in the Midbar was not normal. And, but there was, it, it worked very well. People had uh, all they needed. But when they come into Eretz Yisrael, there are going to be problems. And if there are going to be problems, they're going to end up having conflicts between what you're supposed to do from the Torah and uh, practicality. What are you going to do? You know, do you, you know if, if you have a problem, should I keep Shabbos? Or should I close my store? I mean, it's never an extreme case. But I mean, there are many, many things you're going to come into conflict. So he said like this. He says, Talk to the stone. What's the difference between talking to the stone and hitting the stone? So when you hit the... And also, why, do you, um, in, why don't you bring Raya from Kriya Siamsov? The, the Amsov listened. The difference is like this. Maish Rabbeinu had a power over the Bria. He had a mata. He had a stick, and with the stick, he had a shleet over the Bria, and he was able to do supernatural things. Hikisa Bitsur is supernatural. It is not the nature of a stone to give out water, but when he hits the stone with his mata, then the stone gives out water. Bederech Nes. It has nothing to do with nature. It's Bederech Nes. However, when Moshe spoke to the stone, if he would have spoken, Speaking to the stone means, why doesn't the stone give out water? Why not? Because it's not the nature of the stone to give out water. But what is nature? Nature is, why, why do things fall? Why is there gravity? There's gravity because Rabbi Shalom was mitzava, that there should be gravity. It's chukah teva. So there is this Rabbi Shalom made. Things heavy should fall. So that's, or not heavy, everything should fall. goes down. That's a chukat chaykateva. So, so when something falls, it's bederachateva. So, if you would speak to the stone and you would be mitzavet, not hit it. If you would have been mitzavet pi Hashem, you'd be mitzavet to the stone that it should give out water. Then it would be the nature of that stone to give out water. It would not be a ness. It would be derachateva. Why? Because Rabbi Shalom says this stone should give out water. How would it work? I don't know, maybe some of the molecules would draw water vapor from the air. I don't know how. Maybe, you, know, you know, atoms would change. There would be some kind of a process, and it would be part of nature. It would not be supernatural. It would not be overriding nature. It would be nature. So the Ka'af of Chaim is this. You take a stone, which, and, and the Rabban Shalom's mitzvah the stone to give out water, then that becomes the nature of the stone because it's a tzivoy. So it's natural for the stone to give out water. So Kav Chaimer asks, if the Rabbani Shalom is mitzvah us to do a mitzvah, you cannot say that I can't do it. It's too hard for me. I'm too old. I'm too tired. If you don't have a p'tur, then you can do it. Maybe sometimes, you know, it's, it's too much for you. So you go to the Rav and he'll tell you, no, you're potter, maybe. But if you don't have a p'tur, and the Rabban Shalom's tzivoy is in effect with you, and you have to do it, then you can do it. So mainly, you're coming to Eretz Yisrael, and you're going to have all kinds of situations where you're going to think, this is too hard for me, I have to do this, I have to do that, I can't go to shul, I have to open this. No, no, if you're mitzvah to do it, you can do it. That is the Kalvachimer that you would have learned out from, from, the, from, the, from the stone. Now, what happened over here? Why did why did why didn't he listen? Why did he why didn't he talk to the stone? So it happened like this: the stone was lost over there, and he was going around, and they're looking for the stone. They're trying to find it. So for Yisrael Oimim Lehem Malachem Eizes Selat Etziel on the Mayim. What's the difference? You're Moshe. You could do anything you want. You have a stick. You could do whatever you want. You have a koyach over the bria. What's the big difference? This one, that one. We're all thirsty. Pick a stone and get us some water. L'chein Omer Lam. He said to them, Shimu no hamoyrim, the Pasuk said. Hamoyrim means, Eloshnivani, shoytem. Listen, listen to you. What are you saying? 
המן הסלע הזה, שלא נצטווינו עליו נוצי מים. Can it be possible for us to extract water from a stone that there was not a tzivui to that stone? With the, of course, with the, with the matter, we can hit any stone. But if we're going to go do it with Derech HaTeva, if we go do it with Dibor, then there has to be a tzivui to this stone. There's no tzivui to all stones to give out water. There was a tzivui to the particular stone, which used to be the Be'er Shem Miriam, which should give out water. So if... We're going to talk to a stone that will learn its tavino. That's what he's saying. Then, if then, then, then how could we expect it to give out water? So then, so Moshe thought the whole point of the deeper was to make a kiddush Hashem, to make a kavachaymer. If they could ask such a question, what is the difference? And they're talking to all the stones, saying, "Why are you talking to this stone, that stone?" If they could ask such a question, that means they don't get it. They don't chap. And therefore, even if I'm going to talk to the stone and I'll give out water, they're not, they're going to not see any difference between this and the Vekisa Betsur. It's also, they're going to look at it as also as a nest. So if it's a nest, there's no Kal Vachimer. So he's thinking that the Rabban Shalom told them they should do it, Kedesh Me Kedesh Hashem. But since they are Shoitim, they will not be Kedesh Hashem. So Lemai said, the people need water. I might as well go back to the Vekisa Betsur, as he says. They spoke to a different stone. And then when finally we came to the and then they ended up by this stone, but they thought, look, they don't get it. So we'll do it like in the beginning. Hit it. So they hit it. And that was the problem. They should he should have let he should have the Rabban Shalom said, speak. You don't make a cheshbin. You don't say, no, they don't get it, they this and that. You should do what the Rabban Shalom told you to do. And in the end, if you would have spoken to it, they would have gotten it. Or even they wouldn't have gotten it. Lamaisa, that was the CV of the Rabban Shalom. But probably they would have gotten it. But at this point, that's what they thought. They thought, Moshe thought, that they don't get it. They asked me such a question. Ashlein Stavinu alav. So therefore, the whole, the whole, the whole Kiddush Hashem thing is not going to work. And I might as well just give them the water the way I did last time. That was the pshat over here. So, the only amount to be like the sheni, so made like severe sakal ela oritz, because you didn't make a kiddush Hashem. That's why you're not going to come to Eretz Yisrael. So Rashi says like this: She'ilu dibartem ela sel of a hoitzi, hayisi mikudish. Vaimer masel ozei. One second. Oh, that is Rashi. Yanlo yemantem be. If they didn't do this, they would have gone there to Israel. Kadesh lo yomer aleim, kavoin shar dor midbash nigzer aleim shlo yikonsul oritz, kachayuk avoin moishav aron. Because if they would have died, they would say it's like the miraglim. What's that do with the miraglim? Because the pasuk says in Parshas Devarim, but the ma'aseh of the miraglim doesn't say in the in, in the Parsh of Shlach. But it says in the Parsha of Raglim, um, nobody's going to come. Zulasi Kol of Ben Yefuna, uh, he's going to come, right? Gam bi son of Hashem beglachem lemar, gam atal leisavay sham. So the Pasuk tells us, Mefurish, that because of the Meraglim, Meishar Benu is not going to go to Eretz Yisrael. But, today that people should not think that, it, that he is that he had shaykhs to the, so why, why, why wouldn't he go to Israel? What did he do? He did, he, he just sent the Miraglim. He did, was not, the, didn't participate in the Diva Sa'aretz, but he shouldn't have sent the Miraglim. He made a mistake. And the Rabban Shalom said, Shlach l'chal You could do it. So you did it, and it didn't work out. So he did something wrong. So that's why he wouldn't have come. But today, that people should not say that he's part of the Gzaira of the Miraglim, because it's like a separate gazera over here on him. It's not because it's part of the Miraglim. Therefore, he would have gone. However, now that there was the Meimariva, so therefore, not, now, now we know why he's going to die. There won't be any shash. People are not going to conflate him with the, with the, with the people of the, of the Miraglim. Now, there was also another place where it says that he's not going to go. When he came to, to Mitzrayim, so he came, and things got worse. In the beginning, things got worse. Got worse before it got better. So he said, he said like this. 
Vayomer said, Hashem, Loma Aroyo Salom Azer. Why did you do bad to these people? Loma Zer Shachtani. Meoz Bosi El Pare El Dabish Bishmecha Chor El Loma Zer. Be'atzal El Salta Samecha. What's going on? You sent me to save them and it got worse and it didn't save them? What's going on? Vayomer Hashem El Moshe said to him, Ato Sirius Shel Esel El Pare. Now you're going to see what I'm going to do to Pare. Says Rashi. You second thought me. I told you to go, and you say, why did you do bad? I told Avram that uh, Yitzchak is going to be his, his continuation of his generations, and then I told him, he didn't ask me any questions. And you, I told you to go save them, and it doesn't work right away, so you come with, with questions. The fichach ato sira. Now you're going to see aosay lepara sira. You're going to see what's going on with paray. The loy aosay lemalchei shiva sumas kishaviyam leores. You won't see what's going to happen um, when I take them to Eretz Yisrael. You're not going to go. So we have three places where we see that Moshe Rabbeinu is not going to go. We have this place where we're hamlamari uh, oisa. So you say he doesn't go. And then you have the Meraglim, and then you have May Mariva. So why, why, uh, so if he hadn't been May Mariva, then he would have gone. Why? Because nobody would have thought, th- this thing happened privately. This happened, nobody was aware of all this, that they were, uh, that, uh, that uh, Moshe was told he's not going to go. So if, so, so then could be he wouldn't go, and whatever it is, he doesn't go. But after the Maisa of the Meraglim, if he didn't go, people would think that it's not because of this, it's because of the Meraglim. Either, so therefore, this was, this Xer was taken off, and that Xer was taken off. When it came to May Mariva, then, right? Now, in Pinchas, so there were three Averis. But in Pinchas, it says like this. Hey, May Mariva, hey, Mariva's Kodesh Midbert Sin. So Rashi says, Ein Bohem Oven Acher. This is the only oven to have. The oven of May Mariva, nothing else. So I would think that three, that three of Oynes, now each one, for some reason, it wasn't put into effect to stop him from going to his role. But it was, I would say, three of Oynes. Why is Oven Achod? And Stambazai, it would seem to be that that there is a commonality between all these three things. So I think like this, that they're all caused by one thing. Moshe Rabbeinu had a tremendous, tremendous Avas Yisrael. And, and he was like a doting mother to them. And sometimes a doting mother will do things for the child which really you shouldn't do. Maybe the child will be better if you don't do it. But if the love is so powerful and, and so overwhelming, then the mother will do things that really should not be done. Moshe Rabbeinu had a tremendous love for Klal Yisrael, so when he saw them suffering, then he said, Lama Harayosa. He couldn't take their suffering. I mean, but they, they handled it. They were there, they handled it, but Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't, he couldn't take it. So therefore he said, Lama Harayosa. So it came from that. When it came to the Mice of Miraglim, again, the people came to him, they said, please send Miraglim, we want, we want to know what's going on, we want to know what kind of plan should we make, we need it, we need it. So again, Moshe gave in to them. He, he loved them, and you know, they, were, they were distraught, and what's going to be, so can we send, so okay, fine, send Miraglim. Again, the same thing. And then by May Mariva, when they didn't have any water, and they were halishing for water, and they were pressing, pressing him, so he just gave in, and he said, I'll do it, instead of holding on. And if, if, he, had, if he had not had such an overwhelming love for them, then he would say, okay, you wait, you're thirsty, you'll be thirsty a little bit longer, let's try it. No, because he had such a big love for them, that's why he was nechshel and he gave in. So all three are really, come from the same source, and it's possible to call them of an echot. Now, later in the Pasha, we have the Misa of Aaron. So it says, he told him, take Aaron, take him to the Hoi Rahar. They went up there to a cave or something, and he said like this, take him into a cave. Hachna, he called Islam Ma'ara, v'nichnas. Ro mita, 
Mutsaz v'ner dolog, there was a bed there, and there was a candle. So he told, Umrloi alay lamita. He told Aaron, go lie down on the bed. The Allah, he went on the bed. Pshant yodecha, extend your hand, your arms. Upashat. Kmoit spicha, close your mouth. The komats. Atzom mei necha, the otzam. Close your eyes, and he closed them. Miyad chomad Moshe le'oisa misa. Right away, Moshe said, what a great misa this is, and he had a cheshik for it. He wanted it. What exactly did he see here in this misa? What exactly was this misa that he had such a chemda for it? He says, go lie down on the bed, extend your arms, close your mouth, close your eyes, and then he died. What was it? So this Misa is called, okay, Vayal Aaron HaKoyin L'Horahar, this is uh, in Masse when we have like a brief mention of uh, Aaron's Ptira. Vayal Aaron HaKoyin L'Horahar, Api Hashem, Vayom Hashem. Rashi says, Api Hashem, Melamed Shemais B'Neshika. This was a Mises Nashika. Aaron died Mises Nashika. So this is Mises Nashika. And that's what Moshe saw, and that's what he wanted. What exactly, what is the meaning of Mises Nashika? Why is it called Nashika? And what, what was it? So there's a Gemara in Brochus, Andaf Ches. Gemara says like this. There's nine hundred and three Mises. Nicha Shabakul and the best one is Nishika. Nishika is the best form. What is Nishika? Nishika Damya Kemishchel Benisa Mechelba. It's like you draw a, a hair out of milk. So when a tzaddik dies, the Nishama and the Guf, a person's Nishama and the Guf are connected. They're and um, as much as neshama is involved with the guf, it's, it becomes more difficult to separate them. A tzaddik is really the neshama dominates, and it's not so enmeshed with the guf. So when he dies, the neshama is, goes straight out easily. Whereas by a rasha, the neshama is very enmeshed with the guf. So the Gemara says that it's like pulling, pulling wool out of a thorn, that it's like... It sticks. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out smoothly. That's what Mises Nashika is. That it comes out easily. So this is what he's saying over here. When, when he, what he, when th- this was, and he went into the cave, and he, he lay down, and he spread out his arms. So the movement of his arms ceased. Then his mouth closed and his eye closed. So all the physical systems were shutting down. So when he died, the body was basically shut down, and then the neshama came out easily. Even for the tzaddik, there's also a certain amount of involvement together with, with the body. So because um, his, his body shut down his stages, so when it came for the misa, for the neshama to leave it, it left like a hair drawn out of milk, which comes out very smoothly. So that's why it's called neshika. Neshika is when you, when you kiss, it's like the, mouth, the lips. So the lips don't stick to each other. When, you, when the lips separate, the separation is easy. It just separates. So that's the Misa of Nashika with the, with the Neshama and the body can just separate easily. And that's the best way for a tzaddik to leave this world. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again next week.